In this video, I'm going to show you how to take apart and fix the fader on your KO2. My fader stopped working, so I decided to repair it. Disclaimer, I don't suggest doing this. This will void your warranty, and if you don't know what you're doing, you're going to cause some major damage. So this is for educational purposes only, and if it does break and your fader isn't working, go through the proper channels and customer support and deal with it that way. First, you want to make sure the batteries are out and the unit is off. Also, don't forget to take the knobs off. Then we're going to flip it over and we're going to take out the screws in the back. Once all the screws are out, I'm going to use this plastic tool to remove the backing. If you don't have this tool, you can use a guitar pick or something thin and hardened plastic would work as well. Eventually, one side will lift up and you can use that to pry open the other sides and now the back plate is off. Now take the screws out of this board on the back. This took forever. There are so many screws. But yeah, it just uh, just be patient and take them all out. Now flip it over and carefully push the board out by pressing on the buttons. That's at least how I did it. But as long as you're slow and careful, I think this is a decent method of doing it. Take the board off and move it to the side. Now the next step is we have to take all the buttons off. So I'll do that right now. They come off pretty easily. And also you need to take off the rubber mat that is uh, attached to the board as well. Now here comes the tricky part. We need to solder off the fader so we can bend the pins back into place. I'm using a soldering iron and a suction solder to get the solder off. <clears throat> This is the riskiest part of this whole operation, so please be careful. The bottom single pin was actually a little difficult to get out, but eventually it came loose. Now there's gonna be these bend metal pins holding it in place, so you're gonna have to pry those open. This was kind of a pain to do, but uh, eventually just uh, carefully just lift them up. There's six of them. Now with the fader taken apart, I want you to look at the prongs that are sticking out. We're gonna have to bend these forward so it makes a good connection with the other part of the fader. Now with some fine tweezers, I'm going to pull the prongs forward. You don't have to do this too much, but also don't do this too little. You just wanna make sure you have a nice connection. Now put the back plate back on the fader and bend the pins to keep it in place. Now it's time to re-solder the fader back into place. Now it's time to put the buttons back on and I would suggest bringing up an image of the unit so you can find out where everything goes. It was very tempting to put things in the wrong place because I think it was funny or putting custom buttons in would be pretty cool, but I just wanna get this thing repaired as quick as possible. So yeah, I'm just gonna put the buttons back on where they belong. Now it's time to put the in and out little plastic housing into place and put the face plate on the unit. Now it's time to flip it over and put the 10,000 screws back into place. I noticed that it was easier to hold the board and the face plate in place with the other hands when putting the first screws in. So I would suggest doing that. It's now time to put the main board on the back plate. Now it's time to put the final screws back in and the moment of truth. <sighs> I now have a slider that works. Thank you very much for watching. I decided to risk it and go for it. And I hope you appreciate this video and consider subscribing.